Now what I've wanted to do for a while is to cover sea level rise. Now there's been a lot of dodgy data and uh, homogenization and adjustments or whatever you like to call it to the uh, global temperature measurements, air temperature measurements. And as we'll see there's been a bit of dodgy stuff going on with sea level rise as well, unsurprisingly. Now I was going to call this Croc of the Week, and I thought, no, this is Croc of the Century. That's what it is. Because this is the main fear from global warming, climate change, man-made supposedly, is sea level rise, that hundreds of millions of people will have to move from their homes because they live near the, near the, near the seaside, near the ocean. As we'll see, it's the Croc of the Century. So here we go, one of the main fears which arise from the projection of the CO2-driven global circulation models is that of sea level rise. Hundreds of millions of people live near the coast, and many of these live close to sea level. A relatively sudden rise in sea levels of, say, one metre, or 100 centimetres, if you like, by 2100, would mean the relocation of tens of millions of people and the possible loss of some low-lying Pacific island chain. Now, we'll start with the IPCC and NOAA. Now, NOAA's 2012 report on sea levels. This is a paper by Sweet et al. 2012, which I'll reference. They predicted the best-case scenario of 30 centimetres by 2100, and a worst-case scenario of 200 centimetres, which is 2 metres, by, t by the year 2100. Now, in their newly released 200, 2017 report, just released this year, they increased this to 250 centimetres, I feel like two and a half metres, which I think in US language is about eight feet. I'll reference Horton, Ramsdorf, Engel, Herf and Kemp, 2014, for that latest report. Now, the problem is, in the detail of the report, NOAA say that even the worst case scenario from the IPCC and ER5, that is the RCP 8.5, the sea level rise still has a 96% chance of staying below 50 centimetres and only a 0.1 chance of reaching 250 centimetres by 2100. In other words, even if the worst ca possible case climate scenario happened from the AR5, which is the RCP 8.5, there's still only a one chance in a thousand that this two and a half metres of sea level rise will be realised by 2100. Here's the graph, I'm showing it here. Makes it look like it is the actual level you can expect from an RCP 8.5. That's what it looks like. But that is one chance in a thousand, even if the RCP 8.5 happens. So it's completely misleading. And where do all these massive sea level rises come from? They come from thermosteric rise, which is heating of the oceans, and from melting ice, which cause, cause the eustatic rise in the ocean. So those two, the combination of the two, basically. And here is where they get all that rise uh, in the 21st century from carbon dioxide driven global warming and here's the forcings from AR5 and they are showing that the anthropogenic forcings are basically 47 times the total natural forcings in other words they're saying that 98 percent of all uh, forcings affecting climate change or affecting global warming, if you like, are now man-made. 98%. I'll show in another video that I, that is another crock of you-know-what. And from all these forcings and these models, this is what you get. Uh, these are the UK's Met Office models, the CMIP5 models, which is the red line there. And that shows, whoa, temperature flying up there. And you can see from the black line, which is the actual temperatures that we've seen, the pause that is for the last 20 years, that their models are completely wrong. Why are they so wrong? 
Well, the main reason is that they're not inputting into the models climate cycles, two in particular, which we'll come back to. This is more AR5 IPC stu IPCC stuff from the latest report. And as you see, it shows sea level rise in fits and starts, as you, as you might have come to expect by now. And it shows a recent acceleration. Now that is not actually what happened in reality. The first half of the 20th century was a moderate rise, and the last half of the 20th century, that moderate rise decelerated, as we'll see from the literature. Uh, we'll go to Holgate 2007 here, and what Holgate did, they took, uh, this was published in Geophysical Research Letters in 2007, and as you see here, for the first half of the 20th century, they found a sea level rise of 2 millimetres per year, 1904 to 1953, and the last half of the 20th century, 1.45 millimetres per year, 1954 to 2003. So, uh, in other words, a deceleration, quite a significant deceleration in the last half of the 20th century, with the entire century having a mean rate of 1.7 as, as we know, about 17 centimetres we had right through the 20th century. Now, where did they get their data from? Nine tide gauges scattered across the planet, as you see there. And this is the overall graph, and it shows the variations, the cyclic nature of sea level rise through the 20th century, up and down all the time. Uh, but with a general deceleration, as it says in the paper. This level is still decelerating today. Now we'll go to the next paper, which is Wappelmann et al. A previous estimate uh, from Douglas shows 1.84 millimeters per year. But that's after correction for the GIA effect. Now, now what, what Wappelman get for sea level rise is 1.31 millimetres per year, plus or minus 0.3 millimetres. So solving what they call the sea level enigma, that is that um, the ice melt should be around 0.7 to 1 millimetres per year. And uh, thermal... Uh, warming of oceans should contribute about 0.3 to 0.4 millimeters per year, totaling you know 1.3, 1.4. So where do they get 1.84? And the IPCC gets 2.2, as we know. Where do they get that from? It's from extending out measurements over a larger area where they don't have data from. So it's homogenization, exactly what we see with the surface temperature record. It's done for um, sea level rise as well. Now these are the tide gauges that Wappermann used, as you see. Huge distribution all over the planet. And we'll skip through to, you can look at, the, look at this paper if you want. But we'll skip through to the conclusion. Okay, and the conclusions here, they say that... Um, there's around one millimetre per year contribution from melting of global land ice and 0.4 millimetre per year from thermal expansion. So total, and, and they, from the tide gauges, get 1.3 millimetres per year. So plus or minus 0.3. So this solves the sea level enigma and basically says that the IPCC are way out with the 2.2 millimetres per year that they keep citing. Okay, we'll move forward to another paper on uh, tide gauge sea level measurements by Beanstalk. Uh, this one was published in 2014. They get a global mean increase of 0.39 to 1.03 millimetres per year through all the tide gauges. Now, they note that the main in 
mean increase for locations where sea levels are rising is 3.5 to 4.4 millimeters per year. However, their findings are much lower than estimates of global sea level rise 2.2 reported in the literature and adopted by the IPCC. The problem with those papers is that they make widespread use of imputed data for locations which they do not have tide gauges. So in other words, homogenization, they're just spreading out to other areas just because they think they should to cover the whole planet. This is the coverage of tide gauges in 2000 for uh, Beanstalk. And if you cut a long story short, as I recommend you do with a lot of these papers. Okay, we've got to the nub of this paper. While we find that sea levels are rising in 8 to 30% of tide gauge locations, sea level rise is not a global phenomenon. Consensus estimates of recent global mean sea level rise are about 2.2 millimeters per year. Our estimate is much smaller and ranges between 0.39 to 1.03 millimeters per year. We suggest that the difference between the two estimates is induced by the widespread use of imputed data, which inform the consensus estimates adopted by the IPCC in its fifth review. So there you have it. Now we've looked extensively at tide gauges, giving us sea level data. I've totally ignored satellite data because it, it's inaccurate. Now what we're going to look at now is a paper published in Geophysical Research, Research Letters, 2012 by Goretsky et al. Now this is not specifically about sea level but it's about ocean temperatures. So it relates to ocean warming and what warming we've seen over the last century or so. Now I think we'll cut through this until we get to the uh, graphs, which I have reproduced here. Now the red is near surface temperatures and it was higher in the 1880s, so it dropped down to about 1910, which is a low, high in 1940, low in the 1970s, high in the 2000s, and now it's on its way down again. Familiar pattern that we're all, for, we're all sort of familiar with. This is the 60-year Yoshimura cycle, peaked in 1880, 1940, and 2000, something that is not in any IPCC report. Now, in blue, you've got the deeper temperatures. Uh, slightly, slightly deeper, I should say. Now, what's interesting is the last 20 years, we've got the pores there represented. So there's been hardly any change in ocean temperatures over the last 20 years. That's confirmed by the Argo data as well. And here we've got a similar graph which shows the five-year running average. Down, up, down, up. There we go. So again, we see a deceleration in the rise in temperatures in the near surface of the oceans. The surface which is in orange, and the surface, which is in blue there. So a substantial deceleration, I would say. Here we're showing the depths, and it looks like there's been a deceleration in warming at all depths, by the look of that. So check it out carefully. Which sort of brings us to our conclusion, really... You're not going to see 2.5 meters of sea level rise. Current Lake Noah claims you're not going to see 2 meters, not 1 meter, or even half a meter. What you might see is 0 0.1 meters, so about 10 centimeters, plus or minus 5 centimeters. That's what you might see by 2100. Let's say, oh no, we're going to get 1 meter. No. 
To get one metre of sea level rise by 2100, you'd have to have 12 millimetres per year, which only happened when there was miles of ice above all Eurasia and North America, and, the, and were coming out of an ice age. That's when you got miles of ice melting rapidly by a massive temperature increase of 7 or 8 degrees centigrade over a few thousand years. And that just can't happen today, even if you wanted it to. We haven't got that amount of ice to melt. So don't worry about sea level rise. That is the top and bottom of it. 